Welcome back everyone. This is an addendum to the video that I just put out, my 3000 mile review of a 2022 CX-5 um, with the preferred package. And um, from the feedback of that video, I got the impression that I need to demonstrate Mazda's infotainment system. There's an impression among non-Mazda owners that Mazda's infotainment system is cumbersome, difficult to use, and even more distracting than a touchscreen. What I find as someone who went from a traditional touchscreen with CarPlay um, and a Hyundai uh, Santa Fe Sport to this, I find the opposite to be true. And I, and I wanna point this out. I'm not saying that everyone else is wrong and I'm right and no, no that's, not, that's not what I'm trying to say here. Um, I got some comments on the other video that just one guy who kept basically repeating the same thing, how touch screens are superior and this system here with a non-touch interface is terrible. That person does not own a Mazda, clearly. Um, Otherwise, they would have said as much. And uh, and, I, and I got a few other comments like that. And of course, if you read the reviews, if you watch review videos of the CX-5 or any Mazda product for that matter, um, it's always being reviewed by people who do not actually own these vehicles. When I bought my CX-5, I was a little apprehensive. I thought this would be a step backward from the touchscreen interface I had in my old vehicle. And I, I honestly believe that the opposite is true. This is actually a better way to control your infotainment system while you are driving. I will give Mazda, um, I, I will deduct points, if you will, from Mazda's decision to not just go ahead and throw a touchscreen in, in, uh, in this pod here. It wouldn't have cost them a whole lot to put a touch overlay in this display. Um, and it could have been easily done just to, just to appease the masses. But I want to demonstrate how this system actually works. And um, I had to rig up my old iPhone as a camera so I can plug in my current one. And here we go. So let's say you get in the vehicle. Okay. Now this does not support wireless airplay. I wish it did, but it doesn't. Another ding for Mazda right there. But we're gonna unplug this phone in. This is a this is the current generation iPhone 13 running the current OS. Plug it in. And what's gonna happen is oh sometimes it goes straight into CarPlay. It depends on what mode you're in. But it goes it went straight into CarPlay. Let's say I'm driving along and I want to listen to music. Okay, so I just merely have to glance over. The screen is right in my face. I just grab this knob. I don't even have to look at any, you don't have, this is the thing is, you don't have to look at these controls because guess what? They don't change. Unlike a touch screen, these controls don't change. They always stay where they are. They're static. All right, so if I press the music button, let's we'll see what that does. It brings me straight into um, Apple Music. Boom. So let's say I want to find a different, I don't want to listen to Boston. I want to listen to something else. So I just turn the wheel to back. And this shows me my recently added, this is the normal, by the way, the normal interface for CarPlay. I can take this wheel and push it down like this. And it brings me straight into the menus. I can roll it. I can scroll. All right, let's say I want to listen to Steely Dan. Um, I want to listen to Can't Buy a Thrill by Steely Dan. Now, I have an option of using the voice commands. Now, that is an option, by the way. You do know that. Um, if you are physically able to speak and hear, you can use voice commands. I can just say, play, you know, uh, Can't Buy a Thrill by Steely Dan, and it will play it. Okay? It, that works. But if I want to just do it this way, all I got to do is scroll down to artist, press down on the wheel. Um, okay, S is, it's, it's down there. So all I got to do is quickly spin the wheel, like I'm playing Wheel of Fortune, S. Press down, 
steal it in. Press. Uh, can't buy a thrill. There it is. Press, and then I can select my track from there. All without moving my arms. I don't have to go like this. Look at the road. Okay, which menu? Okay, now look at the road again. Nope, just... There it is. Yep, play. There it is. Boom. Now, I like podcasts. I love podcasts, especially in long car trips. Let's say I want to listen to a podcast. I just scroll the wheel to back. Now, I could also... Now, let me show you another way to do that. That's where these buttons come into play. This is the back button. Boom. Back. Boom. Back. 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 Or... I could use the, the click wheel. Let's say I'm listening to this right here. I could use a click wheel and do that too. But the back button is there so that you can do it without thinking, without scrolling through all those songs. I could just hit the back button as many times as I need to. What happens if I keep hitting back? It brings me to the map screen. Ha, huh? cool. If I hit it again, it brings me to the car's home screen. If I hit it again, it does nothing. Okay. Really not that bad. Now, I'm going to do a couple of maneuvers without even speaking, and you can kind of watch how fast it can be done. Now, I want to go to CarPlay. See a CarPlay is over here? It shows up in this menu. Just like that. There's my, my root menu. All right. I want to listen to a podcast. Here we go. Podcast. Podcast. So I want to do... Uh, Leto's Law. And I want it out. There we go. Look, guess what? Playing a podcast. How hard was that, huh? All right. Let's go back. Boom, boom, boom. I'm using the back button here. All right. I want, uh, I want to see my calendar. There's six events today. Oh, I'm not going to show you what they are because... Now, I want to see what's playing. Let's say I'm at the home menu. I want to see what is currently playing. Whether it be a podcast, music, whatever. Just go to now playing. Boom. There it is. Back. Um, I want to go to the tuner. I want to listen to the... Um, I want to listen to my local stations. I press this favorite places. This little shortcut button here. Boom. Brings me straight to the tuner. And I'm now playing another radio station. Go back one. Back again. Back again. And I want to go... Let's see. I want to listen... Oh, yeah. Menus. There we go. Here's Pandora. Here's Google Maps. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I can open my phone menu from there, too. Look at that. It, it's really not that bad. Now, you can also control it by pushing the joystick. But that... So, let's say you don't want to scroll like this. A faster way would be to go um, maybe down one. And then scroll over to settings. Oops. Push it up, push it down. So I want to go, let's say I want to go from messages over to podcasts. Boom, boom, boom. Or I can go like this. You have options. Um, let's say I'm at the home screen. I'm already at the home screen. I want to go to the, the car menu. Actually, I think you have to go like... What did I do? Yeah, just keep hitting the back button until you get there. Um, let's see. What else can we do? I want to navigate somewhere. Now, this, this is where it gets a little tricky. Because I press this button, it opens up Google Maps. I want to search for a location. I press the search key. I didn't show that because it shows where I live. I'm going to have to cut those pieces out. Um, so this shows me all the local restaurants and see gas stations. And there's a list of all of them near me. Restaurants. Here they come. Okay. Navigating. You can do... So you have a choice. Now I'm using the, the joystick function. To bring it straight to the keyboard. This is where it can get cumbersome. Let's see. La Coretta. Oops, I hit 
See, this is where a touch screen would make sense because when you when you navigate or search for a location to navigate to, um, your instinct is to just go boop, 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 boop. And you won't be doing that while driving anyway. This is where Siri comes into play. Um, all right. Navigate to Walmart. One possibility I see is Walmart Supercenter on Commerce Drive in Hookset. Is that the one you want? Cancel. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's just a different way of moving through menus. And will this take off? Probably not. Um, but other automakers are embracing this system as well. In fact, I, I mean, Mazda did not invent this. Uh, I believe it was either Audi or BMW that had it first. And a lot of growing pains and a lot of um, interface changes took place under BMW's um, time employing and, and implementing and refining the system. I mean, Audi also does the same thing. I've heard even Lexus as well. But the difference is Mazda did not add a touchscreen into their vehicles. And that is a little bit controversial, but um, I prefer this over a touchscreen any day. And here's the other thing is you're less likely to get pulled over using this system than you are with a touchscreen. The police can't see you fumbling with this knob or this one or these buttons. As far as you know, as far as they're concerned, your eyes are on the road and they probably are if you're doing it correctly. Um, you know, you don't have to take your eyes completely off the road to use this system. And that's what makes sense about it. That's why I like it. Um, and I don't have to move my arm. I can just sit comfortably in my seat and just manipulate the screen as I need to. Um, you know, and let's be honest, if I'm setting up navigational directions, I'm not doing it on this anyway. Um, I had a car with a touchscreen before and I, to be honest, I, um... All I did was um, I, I actually set my set my destination on the phone because the touchscreen was too damn cumbersome for me. So, to each his own. Your mileage may vary, and the system is pretty well designed, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, could be improved, sure. Um, and one so one of the arguments was this interface was designed to be used with a touchscreen. Well, of course it was. <laughs> of course it was. Um, you know, yeah. So Mazda did what they could to adapt this touch interface to a tactile click wheel. And I think they did a damn good job of it. Well, that escalated quickly. 4,300 miles. So where the hell am I? I am in Smyrna, Tennessee. I am 1,200 miles from home. Clearly we drove the uh, we drove the CX-5. My parents drove their Hyundai Tucson. And uh, the verdict is in. The, the Tucson, which is a 2018 model, it's not as snappy as this. Uh, this car is the one that we decided to use for kind of traveling around town and uh, running errands and things. Uh, we'll be going home tomorrow. Actually, not we're not going home tomorrow. We're going to back to Chambersburg, Pennsylvania tomorrow. And then from there, we'll spend a night at my, my cousin's house and then we're going to get home. But yeah, this car uh, took the trip in stride um it's our first uh our first real good hard loyal it's the longest trip i've ever tra uh, done in a car um i mean i've actually flown to destinations that were not this far from home i've taken planes so this is nuts we decided to drive the 1200 miles rather than fly for a couple of reasons um, but look at how different the scenery is here from home. We decided to drive because I just, none of us really want to board a plane right now. It's not, 
it's not really top of my list of things I want to do post pandemic or during the pandemic. We're still dealing with the freaking pandemic, but um, I just don't want to deal with everything going on in planes right now. Um, it's just uh, the last thing I want to do, and I think my, my family agrees. My parents and my girlfriend all seem to be on the same page as me on that. But um, anyway, the reason we're taking this trip is because we wanted to see my great uncle. He's not doing well. Don't smoke, kids. <laughs> Uh, just don't, don't smoke. Um, he's pushing, a, he's a 79 year old man, he's on oxygen, not doing well. Um, but we wanted to see him, this is where he's living, and that's it. Also got to meet some family members I didn't know I had, kind of wish I didn't have, but we'll get into that later. Um, anyway, the car did admirably, again, uh, mileage wise, fuel mileage, um, we did around fairly steady 31 miles per gallon the whole way down and we did it in two legs or two two journeys chambersburg pennsylvania was our waypoint or i'm sorry our our halfway point um about nine hours down to chambersburg no no it was like eight eight and a half eight hours down and then another 10 11 hours because we stopped a few times to eat and fill up um so about 31 the highest i got fuel mileage was actually from new hampshire to chambersburg i was averaging i was actually getting up into the 36 35 36 mile per gallon range um which is impressive because it's way above what this car is supposed to get but i verified it i calculated it with receipts and calculators and Polaroids and all that and um no seriously I was getting about 35 miles per gallon that first trip um you know, that first leg, uh, leg of the trip which is which is crazy I, I I was I was amazed but I struggled to get above 31 the rest of the way down um but I gotta wash this car it is disgusting this thing is covered in filth it is the dirtiest i've ever had any car in my life I'm trying to find a car wash around here and uh not having a whole lot of luck um, i found one but it was one of those car washes that has like spinning knives you know scrape the paint off the car i've never been to tennessee before so the the layout and the, the, the types of stores that are here are a little bit different from where I'm from. Actually, it really isn't that much different. But, uh, like, for example, grocery stores, they have what's called a Kroger. I think, I think that's how it's pronounced. Before you guys correct me, I know it's pronounced Kroger. Never been to a Kroger before, so we've got to check that out. Um, but for the most part, a lot of the stores are the same. You know, a little different, but a dot but uh yeah we're uh doing that but yeah so we've already visited family and now we're gonna start heading home tomorrow early in the morning and make that journey back but no issues with the car nothing bad nothing really amazing to report back um comfort wise now Again, you're spending 20 hours in the driver's seat, you know, um, in such a short time. Over, yeah, about 20 hours sitting in the in the driver's seat of this car, and it is so comfortable. I, I neither me or my girlfriend felt even slightly uncomfortable the entire way down. Um, these leather seats are just extremely supportive, and. Um, in ways that matter and, and that's that's just a, I'm, I'm just very amazed by that this is a tunnel wash I don't know how it works um, I don't want any oh Jesus do they have a touch free option <sighs> for Christ's sake hold on well that car wash is a bust um, they I had the tenant the, the attendant come over and uh, 
I just wanted to make sure that they had an option where I could wash the car without any spinning, I said spinning knives, but he didn't get what I was getting at. Anyway, they don't have a touch-free car wash in all of Smyrna, Tennessee. Um, and I'm not going to go adventuring out too far from the hotel, so I'll just go to the gas station and wash the windows as best I can. It won't be very good, but it's better than nothing. I just, these windows are just covered in bugs. And on our way down, we hit some heavy storms and, um, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty nasty. But anyway, <laughs> it was, you know, I gotta say, this Mr. Mr. Car Wash or whatever the hell it is, uh, the attendant was very cordial, very nice. You know, it, it's interesting how friendly some of the people are down here, whereas where I'm from, it's not so much. Um, it's uh, like not functioning yet. Um, yeah, where, where I'm, you know, in, in New Hampshire, People are nice, but they're also very crusty. So, you know, once you break through that initial, you know, that initial hard layer of, you know, what have you. But these guys, you know, wherever we go, I mean, most people are very friendly. Very, very friendly. And, and they all talk funny, and uh, that's fine. That's fine. You know, just kidding. I know a lot of my viewers are from this area, I'm sure. All five of my viewers. Um, would I ever? Would I ever live here? No, I. I could not live down here. Just, I just couldn't do it. Um, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> the heat and humidity is enough to just send me back north. Um, you know, we get we get hot days up in New Hampshire, but it's not like this. Um, it, it's 95 degrees right now, and it's humid as hell and um, at least more than I'm used to. But it's, uh, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta put gas in this car. That's what I gotta do today. So let me pull into that shell station up there. We got to drive by the Nissan factory, um, the land of broken dreams. Um, I wanted to do a tour. That's the thing is like when you're with family and you're not by yourself, there's a lot of things that everybody kind of has to agree on and scheduling and yeah I want to do it or no I don't or um it's a, it's a shame because I really really want to do the uh, the Nissan factory tour um which is I believe a free uh it's free it better be free um and I think you get a free center at the end of the tour but anyway yeah I wanted to do that so bad but now they're closed it's like yeah you know, if I were by myself or just with me and, um, you know, Amelia, maybe we could do something like that. But my my family's here and, you know, they're just not really into that stuff. Actually, my dad would be, but I don't know. It, it, it's just, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's, it's not like a, I guess what I'm saying is I just wish we had more time down here to really explore but we don't. We just don't have that kind of time. We got to get back home. People have to go back to work. I took now all of this week off, so I don't have to go back to work anytime soon. But on a gas station. Well, on our way back, actually after, I'm gonna probably start up the, the camera yet once again. We'll uh, talk about how things went on the way back. Um, cause it's another 1200 miles. This car will have over 5,000 miles on it when we, uh, when we get back home. I started off under 3,000, I think it was like 2950 or so. And yeah, look at that, 4373, Jesus Christ. All right, let me get some gas in this bitch and, uh, get back to the hotel where everybody's waiting for me anxiously. Well, I got the car all filled up and, uh... Ignore that average of 15 miles per gallon. So yeah, we got pretty poor mileage just kind of going around town, but I expect that, um, you know, because we're in stop and go traffic, you're not going to get, you know, 28 miles per gallon just in stop and go traffic and driving like a like an asshole around town. Um, 
just not going to happen. But anyway, um, I find it strange how, like, like where, where, where I'm from, you know, we have pay and spray car wash, like self-spray car wash bays all over the place. They're, like, ev absolutely everywhere. There's, like, one every five minutes. And I'm used to that. And they just don't have that stuff here. So I'm not going to wash the car. I'm, I'll just wash it when I get home and uh, make it look good. But you definitely don't want to take one of these cars um, through one of those uh, touch car washes because you're just going to trash the paint. Absolutely destroy it. Um, you know, that's just how it is. This, this particular finish is very sensitive to that. This one has uh, that ruby red metallic... No, no, that's not what it is. It's called Pure Red Passion or Passion... Whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, you don't want to run it through, you know, just a regular old car wash. Um, unless it's touch-free. Yeah, it's just going to look awful <laughs> in no time flat. But, um... Yeah, so here we are. This is where I'm at. I want to find Crodger. Well, there's a Publix. Maybe I'll go there. I've never been to a Publix before. Um, I bet they have, like... So that, my mission right now was to get the car fueled up and, yeah, fulfill the car up with, with, with fuel, wash it, and get something to eat for the family. But I think I might not be able to fulfill one of those three tasks, so... Here we are. Let's check out Publix. I've never been... See, oh, ambulance. Or ambulance, depending on your pronunciation of the word. Okay, what do we got here? Publix. See, I always thought Publix was like, um, like, like the cheap, the cheap grocery store. I th the name Publix, it just sounds very... Yeah, low cost, you know, EBT cards, that kind of thing. Um, but from what I heard, Publix is the luxury grocery store, and Kroger, 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 is the um, that's the middle priced one. So let's see what Publix has to offer. Well, I gotta say, you know, there is some truth to that Southern hospitality thing. I mean, like. I went in line at this grocery store. I bought a bunch of fried chicken for the family. And um, I'm sorry, I walk up to the grocery store and all they can smell is fried chicken. And I'm like, hmm, let's get that. Anyway, the guy at the fried chicken counter was real friendly, you know, just, just kind, you know, just how much would you like, sir? Oh, can I make that, you know, it's just, just you know, just, just get that, 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 you know, that, the feeling that you're actually welcome in the store. And then I go to the self-checkout counter and the line's like ridiculously long. I waited a few minutes and a couple of other guys showed up and I was going to let one of the guys ahead of me because he had a lot more stuff and I'm like, you probably want to get moving. So I said, you know, you go ahead of me. He's like, no, man, no, you go ahead of me. It's all right. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Actually, no, there was there was more to to that. Uh, it was a little a little confusing as to um, who was on first. You know what I mean? It was a little confusing, and I was uh, by default. I just usually say, "Okay, you you all can go ahead." I think I was after you, and and they're like, "No, no, no." You know, it's, it's you were ahead of us. I'm pretty sure they were ahead of me. Just to get the facts straight, but no, I just just kind people. And then the, I, I went to ring up the uh, the barbecue sauce cups. Apparently when you buy a certain amount of chicken, you get a certain number of those for free. I didn't know that. And the uh, the checkout machine wouldn't let me proceed with the transaction. Oh look, a dull soul. Anyway, um, and the, the attendant came up all smiles. You know, how you doing? What's going on? Oh, I, I can help you with that. 
here we go. You know, it was just, just you know, it's, you just don't get that kind of, um, you don't get that kind of warm interaction, you know, with anyone in the North. You just don't, at least not in New England. Um, it's just, it is a different vibe. I, I will, I will tell you that my first, I think I'm going the wrong freaking way. Uh, let's see. Is there a target on this side? If so, I'm going the right way. And if there is no target, then I'm going the wrong way. Famous Dave's. Oh, I think I'm going the wrong way. So I'm a little disoriented. Cry like realtors. Ha! <laughs> We don't cry like men. We cry like realtors. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going the right way. But yeah, the people that I've interacted with so far have been very warm and, and just just kinder. Up in the Northeast, you just don't get that. Um, everyone is me first. Fuck you. Um, go home. <laughs> go back to Massachusetts. New Hampshire. Um, it's just, you know, it's not friendly. Um, really isn't. Unless you get into certain areas, <coughs> you know, people start to, to treat you like a human being again. But, yeah, there, there is some truth to the Tennessee Southern y'all, y'all come back now, you know, that that is that that does exist um i didn't think it did yeah here I, i'm reviewing smyrna tennessee by the way apparently anyway so it's just a different vibe it, it really is um and there are some people that i wouldn't want to uh run into on a on an alley at night in an alley um and the funny thing is Three of those people are in my family who I just met today. Um, yeah, no, really. They, they definitely do not, uh, they are not people that I hold in high regard based on my limited interactions with these very particular individuals. Um, kind of makes me sick knowing that I'm related to people like that. But anyway, we're not gonna talk about that. Just, just a couple of relatives that I just met today and wish I hadn't. Um, but, you know, there's always, there's always that side of the family that you just, uh, you know exists, but you just kind of pretend doesn't exist. Everybody's got those. This is where we're staying. Um, we just had a little bit of excitement. Uh, there was a, there was a fire. Um, I took the wrong road again. I'm on the highway now. Damn it! I took the wrong turn. So I just wanted to kind of prove a point here. So we're driving along through Virginia, through Appalachia. And uh, she thinks it's pronounced Appalachia. I believe it's Appalachia. Comments below. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys. We filled up in Stewart's Draft, Virginia. And that was 56 miles ago. And we are averaging 35.4 miles per gallon, doing just about the speed limit. And uh, so just so you guys can see, we're, we're cruising along on the highway, getting amazing mileage out of this car that Mazda does not advertise those numbers. I think they advertise it at around 30, what, 30, 32? Actually, let me take a look. I got the window sticker right here. What does Mazda claim? Uh, we did not overinflate the tires. They're inflated the correct amount. And I know I have the uh, got the window sticker in here somewhere, and it tells you what it's supposed to get. Okay, so Mazda advertises 26 combined, which is about what I get and 30 highway and here we are sitting at 35.4 on a vehicle that is not really fully broken in either so that's that's impressive to say the least um i did actually test 
running it on premium. So on one of our Phillips, I, I had about a quarter of a tank, but it's about when we fill it. So at a quarter of a tank, I filled it with premium and the mileage was, ne the difference was negligible. And I did not notice a boost in power. I, I was expecting there to be a slight increase, but I did not notice one. So we're running it on regular. And this is, so we got 4,947 miles on the odometer now. Uh, but we are gonna do a straight shot through Chambersburg. We're gonna stop there momentarily. We were gonna spend the night, but we're not gonna do that. We're instead gonna switch drivers again. Cause I drove most of the way to this point and then she took over and then she's going to get us into Chambersburg and then I'm going to take over from there. Um, this way we don't have to waste another night on the road if we don't have to. We'll just get straight home. It's only what, 21 hours? <laughs> Something like that. Um, oh, wow, it really does slow down when you have it on Yes, it will control the vehicle oh, wow. completely. So if he speeds up, it will speed up. My 2016 CX-5 does not have this feature. If you want to follow him a little closer, which I wouldn't do, but you can press this other button, go up on that, and it will start to creep forward, and then it will maintain the distance. But what we're doing is we're keeping the travel or the, the following distance at the max, just in case something goes catastrophically wrong. Um, I don't trust automated systems that much, so I want to have time to react if I have to get involved, or in your case. Um, but yeah, good times. Well, we're back from our trip, back at the old ranch. And uh, yeah, so we drove from Smyrna, Tennessee. We left at around... Um, about 8.30 or so this uh, yesterday morning. And uh, we drove the entire 1,200-mile trip in one day. We, uh, we left Smyrna. We went um, all the way through uh, Virginia, West Virginia. Then we hit Maryland. Eventually, we landed in Chambersburg, PA. And uh, we were going to spend the night, but I decided, you know what, I just want to get the hell home. So I, uh, I actually decided to sleep most of that. Uh, I let Amelia drive for most of that trip um, just so I can get some sleep. And then I, um, I was pr pr pretty well rested. And uh, so I drove from... Uh, Chambersburg to uh, Connecticut. Yeah, I think, yeah, I drove from Chambersburg into Connecticut. And um, and then Amelia took over from there. She drove for about an hour, hour and a half, and then I drove for about another hour, and then she drove the rest of the way. But we did it in, uh, we did it in about, because we stopped a few times, we did it about Probably 18 hours, I think. I didn't really keep track of time that well. I wasn't really concerned, but... Anyway, um, so this is uh, my poor CX-5 after its first real road trip. And it's, uh, it's quite disgusting. This car is so gross right now. It needs to be cleaned thoroughly. And uh, actually, it's not too bad. I put the rubber floor mats back in because the carpeted ones, they're kind of thin. I didn't want to ruin them. So I put the rubber mats back in the car. And uh, so far so good. I, uh, I did check the oil and um, it was exactly the way it was when I left. It was, um, so when I left, when we left um, New Hampshire before the trip, I had the oil changed, and um, that was in my previous video. So the oil was changed, and uh, put the I set, I actually topped it off a little bit because they didn't put they didn't fill it up correctly, so I had to adjust the level. But um, I had it right at the full mark on the dipstick, and wouldn't you believe it? Um, let's check this out. So. Oh, it didn't come up. 
Uh, they're at a service soon. <laughs> so we left with uh, fresh oil and the reminder is set for 3000 miles because that's just what I do. And uh, we are now due for an oil change. That oil lasted about a week. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, look at the odometer, 5,500 miles. You know, a lot of people do this. You know, they'll buy a car, they'll take it on road trips, they'll go to Florida and back a few times, and it's nothing, you know, it's nothing, whatever. But for me, I don't usually do this, so this is uh, it's a bit much. Um, yeah, we're due for an oil change um, in one week. Damn, mic drop. So, uh, we this these air filters are brand new when we left. I just bought them. And they're empty. Completely <laughs> empty. Um, because we had the blower running the entire time. So they got used up in one week. Um, yeah, it's just nuts, man. Nuts! How did I get the other one out? How is it in there? Shit. I'm trying to find the other one and I can't... Uh get taken out because I had one in the, in the back here no oh, it's missing must have fallen out of the vents well that happened anyway so how does a CX-5 perform on a trip like this well it's averaging 26 miles per gallon right now because I just filled it and I've only done a couple of around town errands. So, but the entire journey, um, I we averaged, I would say about 34 miles per gallon. And uh, that was on regular fuel. So the trip home was pretty uneventful. Now the thing is, for part of the trip, I actually started to kind of push it a little harder. And I had an average of about 80 miles an hour traffic was moving at 80 so I stuck it at 80 and um, so that entire section of the trip which that was from I think after we entered Virginia we filled up from Chambersburg so we went from Chambersburg down to uh, Virginia that's when we filled up and from that point down to Smyrna, Tennessee, we averaged, I averaged about 30 to 31 miles per gallon. Now it's important to note that we were pushing it um, about 80 miles an hour, like I said. Now on the way back, we averaged it around um, 70 miles an hour. And that's how I got the car to do about 34. And I was touching or flirting with the, um, the an average mile per gallon of about 20, uh, 36 miles per gallon. Um, so that's pretty damn good. For a two and a half liter engine hauling this vehicle with two adults, that's not bad. Plus all of our stuff. Um, you know, that, that is pretty reasonable in my opinion. And again, this car is not fully broken in yet. So, um, anyway, so yeah, that, that's not bad. I'm actually pretty impressed with this vehicle. You know, my parents, they did the trip in a, um, a Hyundai Tucson. Now the Tucson is a little bit, um, s smaller engine. Um, but they did average about the same fuel mileage that we did but it was a smaller engine. It's, it doesn't have the acceleration that the CX-5 has, um, but it was an otherwise decent vehicle. And, and you know, they, I think they were having comfort issues. Their, their car has the base model cloth interior. Um, the seats aren't really as supportive as, as these are. These are nice. I am um, very impressed with the quality of these seats. And, um, I really didn't feel fatigued at all. None of, none of, I, 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 I've driven this trip in other vehicles, um, namely a Nissan Versa, 2007 Versa, a 2010 
Hyundai Elantra GLF and a 2014 Hyundai Elantra GT. And all of those vehicles can't hold a candle to the comfort that you get in these seats. A lot of those other cars, uh, oh my gosh, he's gonna knock something. Um, the, the sheer comfort that these seats provide is um, unmatched by any of those other vehicles. It's just it's, it's crazy how comfortable these are. And um, again, neither of us had to keep shifting or fidgeting to get comfortable or to, you know, the pressure points were exactly where they need to be. The driver's seat has an adjustable lumbar, which I adjusted for my own, um, my own back. And, uh, yeah, I, I cannot say enough about how comfortable this car was on this trip. It was just, um, it's been said before that Mazda is really punching well above their, um, well above their market. And, uh, and they're really killing it with that. Um, these are just so comfortable. Uh, they're perforated, so you don't really have, you know, you're not, you don't get that leather seat uh, funk, if you will, on long trips. Um, we actually have these seat heaters on. You know, they're actually, they serve two purposes. They're for comfort for cold climates, but they're also uh, good for circulation you run the seat heater at least at low it really does help the circulation in your back and um and i was very very grateful that this thing has those um i'll also to mention that you know my neighbors just placed an order for one of these um same exact options uh they wanted a gray or a black one um my neighbors to the to the to the right of my house over there so they're they're going to be uh welcoming home a new CX-5 um, probably within the month and uh, so I'm really happy for them they they wanted to see mine first before they made the decision and they really they kind of fell in love with it and uh, so anyway I think uh, I'm gonna head off and um, upload this video so um, the navigation system, by the way, this, these controls that I talked about earlier in the video, these were perfect, perfect. Um, I learned, you know, it, 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 then it takes some getting used to these controls, but I think once you do, you're going to find that it's far superior. I do wish Mazda actually did add a touch screen just to, just to placate the naysayers. I think adding a touch screen to this would be a smart move for Mazda. Um, but continue with these. Leave the controls. I don't want to lose those. Those are the physical controls are they are king. And I just hope I can spill something on here. We gotta. I got. I gotta. I'm gonna detail this car hopefully tomorrow. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just take everything out of it. And we're gonna clean it real good. Um, it needs it bad from all that driving. But the controls. At no point did I feel confused or let down by these controls. And I navigated 1,200 miles, actually a total of 2,800, 2,400 miles of pure driving with these controls. And I have no complaints. And she's going to drop something on my Miata. I know it. Well, maybe not. I would help her, but she insists on doing it herself. So, okie dokie, honey. Uh, just don't drop anything, please. But anyway... That's all I got for you guys, and uh, stay safe, and um, if you're shopping for a RAV4 or a, uh, really anything, especially a, a freaking Nissan Rogue, if, if, if that's what you're looking for, I highly, highly suggest just taking a look at a CX-5, and uh, I think you'll be very pleased with what you find, so until then.